Yes, in 2024, Friday the 13th will be back. And today I'll be talking about everything we know so far with the new Friday the 13th TV series called Crystal Lake. And also I've got some Scream 7 updates for you guys as well. And I'll also be talking about my potential theory or my idea for the next Scream movie. How you doing? How you been? My name's Matt McFarland. And if you're like me and you like slasher movies or really just anything horror related, then you probably want to make sure you subscribe because there is plenty of that kind of stuff around here. So yes, as I already mentioned, Friday the 13th will be back in 2024 with the TV show Crystal Lake, which will be coming to Peacock sometime this fall. So the latest we know about the new Friday the 13th TV show called Crystal Lake is that it will be coming out later this year and it'll be sort of a prequel, but be more like a pre remake which I know is confusing, but I'll explain. So according to all the interviews and little tidbits we've gotten from the man in charge of the show, producer Brian Fuller, it sounds like the show will focus at first on the story before the first Friday movie. So you'll most likely follow Pamela Voorhees in the early years and also a young Jason at one point. And damn it, Brian, I wish you would give us some more information. But it's also pretty clear that for the subsequent episodes later in the series, the story will pass by the original movie and will jump into the timelines of the sequels a bit. Brian's even confirmed on record with Fangoria that we'll see a ton of different manifestations of Jason, which I think is incredible. I mean, if we get to follow around a young Jason for a while and get to see what really happened to him, then eventually get to follow him around a little bit, a little closer than normal, watching him avenge his mom's death. I mean, god damn, sign me up for that all day. And I feel very confident we'll fall around Jason and see what life is like for a kid with special needs and kind of that era. And I'm sure how terrible he gets treated along the way, which funny enough will probably make you empathize more and more with what Pamela did. I know, like with Rob Zombie's Halloween, getting these origin stories aren't everyone's thing, and I like the ambiguity of a character's backstory as much as anyone, but I mean, if it means we're just, we're getting more Friday the 13th and more Jason content, I'm definitely down to see what they come up with. And another bit of huge news with the show is that Adrian King, the final girl from the original movie, who was both in part one and part two, has been confirmed that she'll be coming back as a pretty big part of the show. We know this because she's been posting a ton of stuff about it on Instagram, pictures of her meeting with Brian Fuller, the writers and the production team and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really interested to see what character Adrian King ends up playing. I mean, I guess they could bring back Alice if they wanted to show some things she did before her fun little night at Camp Blood while getting creeped on by Steve Christie. But there's also a chance we'll get to see her in like an entirely different role. I hope they don't make her Pamela Voorhees though, but I think making her someone running the camp in the 50s or the 60s as someone who was always trying to have Jason's back and having some empathy for young Jason could work for me. To me, she's naturally just a charismatic actress and just a likable person in general, I think. So I think she would fit into a role like that much better than like more of a villain role. But in the end, hopefully we get a lot of Jason in the series because that's what we want, right? That's what I want. The other stuff is great too. And I really love that era all the way from the 50s to the 80s, which sounds like it'll, you know, essentially the series will cover. But I think there's only so much that could be interesting to watch by just following these all-American type camp counselors just hanging out with some good characters and others who are kind of bullying people and pranking people and doing stuff, normal stuff kids would do. Following that, I just don't think there's really that much there to keep me interested in the show. So either some Jason kills as a young kid or especially some Jason carnage when he gets full grown is definitely what I'm looking to see in the series. Plus getting to see a new take on, this, on Jason's look and his mask and all that. So I'm pretty damn pumped for that too. And the icing on the top is that thanks to Brian Fuller's Instagram, we might also be getting the man, the myth, the legend, makeup effects icon Tom Savini back working on the series. Tom Savini, of course, was the incredible effects guy behind the gore in 1978's Dawn of the Dead, The Burning, Friday the 13th, 1 and 4, and so many other projects. So yeah, just a ton of great news popping up left and right about the new Crystal Lake series, which should be coming out on Peacock sometime around September. If I were to kind of put my money on it, I would say like September-ish. But anyways, next, let's talk about some Scream 7 rumors and theories for a minute. So yes, unless you've been living under a uh, stab universe for the past several months, I'm sure you've heard that what a shit show essentially the Scream 7 production's been. 
Well, after losing director Christopher Landon, the latest unconfirmed rumor is that they've found someone new to direct the show or direct to direct the movie, excuse me. Who, you might ask? Well, unfortunately, we don't know exactly yet, but apparently they've found someone and are slowly trying to kind of clean up this ridiculous mess that they have on their hands. So I would expect to hear some confirmed Scream 7 news in the next maybe like two months or something like that. But I just want to quickly talk about where I would like the Scream franchise to go after everything that's gone down. So obviously, barring any crazy twists in the development of a new movie, they will have to go in essentially an entirely new direction compared to Scream 5 and 6. Jenna Ortega's out, Melissa Barrera's out, kind of the two most important characters in this new baton pass from the legacy characters. And here's kind of my idea for a new direction to Scream 7, okay? This is a very rough idea. I just kind of came up with this on the fly, you know? So I personally would love to see the movie bring Chad, Mindy, Sydney, Kincaid, and Gail back. You know, maybe some other characters too, but we'll talk about that, you know, as we get more into this stuff along the weeks and months. But this time, essentially, Mindy is going to die in the opening, in my idea. Mindy would die in the opening in Los Angeles because after what happened in the first movie, well, in Scream 6, Mindy and Chad then transferred to UCLA where Mindy's studying film, which was always something that kind of Randy should have done in Scream 3. Come on. Plus, if you look back and just kind of think about it, probably the biggest downfall with Scream 6 and just the biggest gripe with people was probably the plot armor in that movie. So this new production team needs to let the audience know right away that there's stakes here, right? So a slight twist in the opening, though, would be that we see it all go down on a social media post and Mindy actually ends up killing one of the ghost faces. And it's revealed to us that the killer is Stu Mocker. Okay, don't laugh. I know that kind of sounds ridiculous, but there's going to be a pretty big twist that I'll talk about in just a second with that opening. So hold your panties, okay? The other ghost face is then just basically devastated. And because Mindy's dead, the surviving ghost face takes the other ghost face's dead body and gets away, right? The killer essentially posted all of this on social media to send Chad and the others a message to lure them back to Woodsboro, a more familiar location like it seems like, essentially, for whoever the killer is. Which, of course, isn't too far away because Woodsboro is supposed to be Northern California in the series. Then yada yada yada, the normal Woodsboro stuff goes down. However, this time they don't recycle just old filming locations. They find some incredible new places to have it all go down. But Spyglass agrees before filming that this will be a minimum of two movies because at the end of this movie, Ghostface actually gets away and is never revealed. But because this is my idea, I know that the Ghostface is Joel, the cameraman from Scream 2, who was connected to Mrs. Loomis because they work together since they're both in journalism and they also grew up together. However... You know Scream loves to use current events in their movies, so the big twist on the opening, like I mentioned earlier, is that it was actually deep faked and then posted online. It wasn't Matthew Lillard. It wasn't Stu Mocker in the opening as Ghostface. That was just used as a decoy because a lot of the main characters in Scream also think Stu might be alive. It was actually Joel's 20-year-old son who he's been mentoring and is also the son of Mrs. Loomis. But anyways, that's just a random off-the-cuff idea. Might be silly, might be ridiculous, might be awesome. Who knows? But I'd also love to see maybe characters like Joshua Jackson brought back in some way. There's just so many things that you could do here with Scream. I just think regardless of what cast members are coming back or what cast members are not coming back, there's so much to do with Scream, which is so exciting. And I'm still looking forward to Scream 7, if that's in five years or 10 years, whenever it is. Still looking forward to it, and I'll be there day one. All right, everybody, that is it for me. That is your latest Friday the 13th and Scream 7 news. Make sure you check out one of these videos next to me if you want more content from me right now. Make sure you subscribe. And my name again is Matt McFarland, and I will see you in the next one.